So I'm pretty excited about this video. We got a live detection here. So this is interesting. It happens. And this is why I tell you that if you're running like some off the shelf McAfee or trend microbe antivirus that you bought at Target or something like that, it's really kind of a joke. And you really want to be running something like Sentinel One, Critical Start, or uh, something that is enterprise level if you really want true detection. So let's go ahead. This is unscripted. So I'm just going to jump into it. Let's go ahead and change over to the presentation mode here. All right, so what you can see is something very simple. So I wanted to check out this is RPG that popped up on my Epic Game Launcher called Zenless Z Zone Zero. I was like, okay, what the heck? They keep advertising it to me. It's Epic Games, right? So a reputable brand. I was like, okay, like let's let's give it a shot. But one, once again, you can't trust anything in cybersecurity because Epic Games, even though it is promoting this game, that's not the company that actually produces the game, right? So it was like Hoya or something like that. So I sent to the one, basically, I noticed I launched the game and I'll, st I'll start from the Epic Game Launcher, see if we can see this right, okay? So see, that's actually gone. The Epic Game Launcher is completely gone at this point. Let's see, do I still have my zoom mode set up for y'all? Cause I want y'all to be able to see this. Okay, so you can see, and let's see if we can get a little bit further in, make this a little bit bigger for y'all, okay? Cause I want y'all to be able to see all the details here. But there we go. That's that's a much better zoom. So you can see right now the Epic Game Launcher completely is removed. So think about this. It didn't just detect the game. It actually detected that the Epic Game Launcher itself and, you know, Epic Games like that's Fortnite and, you know, major titles here. But it also and it did basically what I have it configured for, which is to kill, quarantine, roll back and remediate. So I'm going to drag my Sentinel-1 off the screen because I want to show you what the back end of this actually looks like now that it's taking action. So let's go through this. And by the way, here's the game launcher. Right? Here's the Epic game launcher and stuff like that. Um, in my library, you'll see the Zen, 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 like that's even gone. Like it's literally completely undid all the changes. And basically it wants to, to reboot my machine at this point to, to fully remediate this. Okay. So now if I go to Sentinel one, see, I'll have to zoom out a little bit. Let's see if we can adjust this around. Okay. So we're going to go to the, and this is going to be on device TI desktop four, which is right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the actual incidents. Okay. So we're going to go to the incidents tab. And so that's on the left hand side. It looks like the little shield is what we're looking at. And then if you look at recent incidents, there it is. Epic game installed, installer. Now what you notice is that the Epic game installer is showing completely mitigated, right? So it's been killed in quarantine. So if I click on this, all right, it'll show me the details. It shows me the location of where it was installed. It shows me the command line arguments that was run and particularly what I'm looking for. Oh, look at this. So I'll talk about this in just a little bit. So behavior AI engine. So let, let me translate this for you. Okay. So I need to zoom out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of be going back and forth and I don't have my zoom set up. But I kind of reconfigured everything. So I want to go back to my policies for a second. Okay. So let's talk about this just a little bit. So under the policies, and I'm in the active protection group, right? So you got to go to the actual group that you want to review the policy for. And so for the active protection group, I have it set up that basically if it's a malicious threat threat, so you have two different type of threat categories. So kind of think about this in a form of testing and notes, right? I like to break things down into bullet points. You have two types of detections, malicious threats and suspicious threats, and you get to determine the action taken based on the type of threat. So for a malicious threat, I wanted to do protection versus detecting means it'll just notify you that it was done, but it won't do anything. Okay. And so for suspicious threat, in some cases, me like in, in my actual job, we may have that configured for a customer to do detect only for suspicious and only protect from malicious, but really you want to protect and protect if you can. And then I wanted to kill and quarantine, which would mean stop the process, take the file, put it in a location where it can't access anything, remediate, fix all the damage and then roll back. Basically it keeps like volume shadow copies, which is basically copies of three copies of your machine state that may have changed, but at the last time checking this keeps three copies of this current state of your machine. And it actually like puts your machine back to the original state. So it's like, I never installed this game in the first place. Okay. And so then you remember, I want you to understand this. I want you to see this specifically because when we're looking at the detections, you have all of these detection engines. You have the rep, the reputation, static AI, static suspicious, the behavior AI executables, documents and scripts, lateral removal, anti-exploitation, fileless, which means there's no file, of course, potentially unwanted applications and application control. Okay, so now that you have that knowledge, let's go back to the actual detection, okay? 
And so we'll look at this one, the Epic Game Launcher. It's a malicious threat. It's not suspicious. It's malicious. Okay, you can see it right there. Malicious threat. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And by the way, let's see how many threats we actually had. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for a second. I'm going to move this down because I don't want to re reboot my machine just yet. But note that some detections will require machine reboot. So keep this in mind that this was a mass of machines that this happened on that in order for Sentinel-1 to completely mitigate the threat or remove it, it requires a reboot in some cases. Okay, so looking at this, all right, just want to see what detections we had. So this is the only detection we have today. So this is July the 7th. That was June the 14th, the last time we had a detection game guard. Once again, game related stuff. And so anyway, looking here, we're going to go ahead and click on the Epic Installer and let's walk through this. So now that we know, we know the originating process is like this process, this game launched Chrome for whatever particular reason. Okay. All right. We notice where it's located. Okay. And by the way, note this. Notice, notice it doesn't say C colon program files this. So the way Sentinel-1 references it is by basically the hard disk volume. Okay. So, and if a lot of times we, we need to know this, but there's uh, times when we need to put exclusion. So if this was a false detection, we'll put like backslash device backslash hard disk volume asterisk instead of six okay that way if if this file was detected on any hard disk because we don't always know what hard disk it is and so but this is how sentinel one referenced it by the hard disk volume don't know all the details maybe things i don't know if that's some lower level or some unix type of you know what can be unix because of windows but i don't know it seems like some old school references that i don't know i kind of understand it but i don't know the reasoning behind it right and but honestly i think this is the way that your machine actually references your disk volumes like at a lower level so anyway if you know that put that in the in the uh, chat let me know you know be, be, be mindful that people are new so explain it in simple terms please all right and so then the command line arguments this is what actually was run so it's going to be a slash i for install so it's an msi file so here, here's how we break this down you when you when you install something you can have a dot exe file that you double click or you can have a dot msi file file most of you have probably seen that even if you're just brand new to cybersecurity. So with the .msi file, it's a what's called a Windows installer file, and it's basically it just almost seems like it's a cleaner way to do installations. All right, so it's packaged specifically to install a Windows machine, nice and clean. And so when you do it, you launch a process called MSI exec, MXEXEC, and then that process references and it knows to look for and take action on the MSI file, which this is. And you use the slash i when you're typing in the command. Slash I means install, slash X means uninstall. So I can see that this is an install. I can see it's in my D colon downloads folder, which is like my main hard, which is my secondary hard drive where I kind of store stuff, my pictures and stuff like that. You know, so my C drive is kind of where I have, it's a smaller hard drive, it's a faster hard drive. That's where I run games and stuff like from. D is where I store things. And then it references the Epic installer. So this is the MSI file that was used to install the Epic game. So not even necessarily this one game, that I'm playing, but the Epic installer itself, but it has something to do with this did not, this did not happen until I actually tried to install the game. The Epic installer was already installed for several days, but when I tried to launch the game, it's while I downloaded it and ran the game, that's when everything triggered. So let's go over here. Let's look at the analysis verdict. It doesn't know. Undefined, it's currently incident status, or it's, it's currently an active incident, it's unresolved, which means that basically for us, as the SOC analyst, we would need to go in here and we need to actually choose the action to resolve this once we've kind of done an investigation. So system one says this don't look right. It's inconclusive. It went ahead and took action. So this is something to be mindful of. This was a production environment. This was a program that Sentinel one also didn't know about. And it was a production critical program. This could be very bad. So you have to be very mindful that when you set Sentinel one up or any of your EDR to do an automatic kill quarantine and take action, that you could potentially impact a major application and break something okay all right so with that being the case it's undefined and then we look here so of of the things that happened it had 69 processes that were successfully killed in less than 100 milliseconds this is why you can't do this stuff manually folks you 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 have no ability to react in 100 milliseconds and kill 69 process unless you have typed up a script ahead of time and you still will take a long hours to prepare for that and so then, in addition to that, it quarantined 573 files in less than 13 seconds, okay? So that means basically at this point, that's probably the entire Epic game, you know, or game that was downloaded to Epic Games. And now what you have is remediate. So hover over this, you can say, 
91 thread, 91 thread creations not remediated. They are used by other applications. And so this is why the reboot is required. So keep in mind, if you're doing this at scale, if you got thousands of machines, you're going to have the detections. But just because Sentinel want to take actions, it can only go so far. So it's not going to remediate the rest of these threats until I actually reboot the machine, which means I will have to stop the video to do so. And then uh, three items pending. Let's see. Threat change is not. All right, let's 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 move this up just a little bit. All right, so hover over this. So threat change is not rolled back. They are used by the application. Same thing requires a reboot to take action. So the thing is, as a SOC analyst, if you're looking at this, then you're going to have to reach out to the user, contact them and say, hey, I need you to reboot this machine and and kind of come back and basically put your notes in here. That's one thing that's very important, too. So once you've done all of that stuff, you do need to add notes to all of this. OK, so you don't ever go in there and do anything like to mitigate a threat without you adding some kind of notes. And sometimes you have like a security orchestration or it's called a SOAR, which is a system that automatically integrates with your EDR and other programs so they can put the notes and it'll automatically put the notes here to automatically take action for you based on it. So it's like a, a program that runs at separate from your endpoint detection that also can automatically do actions and take actions in a program. But as a SOC analyst, you want to put who you are, what the timestamp is, any actions that you're taking, because if anything ever goes wrong, your job is on the line here and things could happen and things always do go bad in cybersecurity. And you can end up like, OK, what did you do? Why are you here? What took place in this environment? But there are plenty of laws to go in and kind of show you exactly what happened, too. So that's not the end of the world. But just say protect yourself. Document, document, document. Do not let the urgency of the issue stop you from taking actions that can literally save your career okay or even save you potentially jail time or other things depending on how severe the incident is right so once again that's a rare case but you do need to always be conscious of risk so let's go ahead i'm going to back out to the main screen for a second now what we want to do now let's go ahead and let's dig into this further okay so now we've kind of seen like this is kind of like the quick view let's go into the threat details to show you what sentinel one does here i'm going to drag this off the screen in the meantime so this is a detailed view that kind of gives you all the things that have happened. Like you're looking at all the minutia at this point. So a good example, threat indicator. So now it kind of gives you a rundown of what happened. Evasion, process resources was manipulated by memory. Anti-debug technique was used. Why are you doing that, Epic? You know, so it kind of gives you all of these things. And see, you got these numbers to click on. So that you can, and this is what's nice. If you're familiar with the modern attack framework, I think this is a bad design, by the way. I don't think you should go off the threat page. I think you should open in a new window. Hello, hello, Sentinel One. Okay, so I'll right click it here and and do that. So impaired defense, defense evasion, disable modify two tool. So mod, the minor attack framework basically is a documented methodology of how people can attack other, how malicious actors can attack devices, software, all kind of things. Right? Like it's it's basically documented. Like there's almost a finite amount of things or there's a finite amount of things that they can do to attack and exploit machines and that's what it does so it maps it out to the different modern attack framework so if that's something you're not familiar with take a look i need to go do the official course on attack iq note that attack iq has a really full full like fully baked course on the modern attack framework you need to do that so these are all the things that took place user log on general user log persistence and everything and so then if we scroll down, once again, notes here, note, 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 XDR, let's see what that is. No XDR enrichments are available. Okay. If you're in the marketplace, you can check this. So it looks like you can add the XDR. Well, it does some kind of enrichment and actually kind of does some action or more diagnosis for you. So now once we looked at this, you can see Epic Games and stuff like that. It gives you the signature verified. These are all very helpful things. We see it took place through Chrome. Let's see the console connectivity going online. Now, if this were something actively that we thought actively was happening, by the way, it still points out right here that the machine needs to be rebooted. But we can also take action and we can actually like for this machine, well, not on this screen, but one of the things that we could have done on the previous screen, and I'll show you that if I remember for the video is over, is we could have actually disconnected this machine from the network. If we thought this was a threat that was something that could potentially spread, we go in and we disconnect it from the network, which means that it can talk only to the Sentinel One console, but it can't talk to any other computers or anything on a local network. And this allows us to do necessary things. We can connect to it, remote into it, use the command prompt, run PowerShell commands or, or shell script if it's Linux or Mac or what Bash or whatever you want to call it there, and and be able to to remediate the machine, fix the machine without it having impact anybody else. 
But anyway, let's go to the Explorer view. I want you to see this. This is kind of a cool breakdown. Let's see if we can zoom in on this for you, okay? So this breaks down like, okay, what actually happened? So we have six events here, starting with the MSI exec, MSI exec process, okay? So name, Epic Installer, that's the MSI file that we talked about. Let's see if we can move this over. Do, 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 do. There we go, right there. So we got this, so seven processes total. It gives the process ID. This is all helpful information and being able to kind of fully understand what happened. Okay, let's see, can I expand this? All right, so I can expand it here, but I can't go any further. All right, so, and I'm working with my screen, so I gotta get my screen set up better here. So then, that launches a child, that's interesting. I've never seen this before. That launches a child process called msexec.exe. Well, I mean, that is like exe, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. I'm tripping, you know, sometimes you like, you can overthink things, and I was definitely overthinking it for a second. So it launches the MSI exec, the consent, consent, single note, not sure what that is. I think I've seen it before, but not sure. Another MSI exec process. And so we can expand this out and this launches a bunch of DLLs. And then let's see, is that the end of the chain here? And then over to the right, let's see if we can kind of get all this on the screen. All right, so that launches that. What does this launch? This launches the, the Epic Game Installer. Dot exe this launches the consent dot exe and we can simply like we can look up a lot of these files what is consent dot exe the one of those one i don't know if this is a user prompt or something like that but we can google it i'm not going to go down a rabbit hole with that let's got this dx setup process this is run silently you can see the command switch there slash silent once again direct x uh so this is related to direct x program there so that's launched and so basically it kind of this is really cool because it literally kind of gives you almost a map of exactly how a threat took place and this is what you can kind of use to help determine if this is something truly malicious or not now looking at this right off i don't know just to be honest like when it comes to launching all the dlls and stuff like that i do not know enough based on this because i am not i'm not like a malware analyzer or anything like that you know somebody who digs that deep into it and so this is one of the things you're going to be presented with a sock challenge you got to use all the data that readily readily available at your disposal to to put this all together figure out is this an actual threat or not this could be benign but it could be malicious because once again there's always the possibility that the company has embedded something in the software and it's getting distributed to millions of people and you never ever know you understand so also i saw something that popped up on the bottom here so you can see this let me go down when i hover over that let's see where is it okay i'm zooming in too far all right cool so right here i don't know if you notice let me go back to the bigger view so you can see this all right so you can notice also as i i gotta drag this back down now so also you got this zoom over here this is really nice zoom it back in because i lost it now we can zoom in right here okay but if you notice when i hover over this look at this at the bottom see the little timeline thing pop up and let's move let's move this up a little bit problem sometimes webcam gets gets in the way let's see if i can grab my webcam there you go all right so you see as i hover over these see the little timeline thing pop up down here at the bottom do it again see that at the very bottom of the page okay so cool so we got that going on so that also kind of gives us an idea we can look at july the 5th 2024 all the way at 9 at 1756 all the way to july 7 2024 now, if I'm not mistaken, we can't adjust this timeline, can we? I guess not. Well, this is a finite, so identified and reported time. So I guess it's giving me a defined period. But let's scroll down just a little bit. And by the way, here are all the processes that are associated with the threat. So zoom in. Let's move this over. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to do these videos because I'm kind of getting caught in between windows. So look at all these. It lists all the different processes and the process IDs and stuff like that. And as an analyst, you basically this is why it's good to import understanding process IDs because you can go back and I mean it's already put it together. But if you didn't have Sentinel One, you would basically have to use command line to be able to like see what the process ID is, see what the child child process ID, the parent process ID, and figure out how exactly this. You have to literally do this manually. You can do this manually, but it takes a while. Okay, so then we go down here, and here's what's cool: you got the complete timeline of all this file deletion like what took place and everything is listed right here the attribute let's see file attribute looks like the file path so it actually shows the dll you got the sha which looks like there's no sha there you can see it, the verify this is not assigned executable all these different things the source process id you source process uid which is a unique identifier and you can the event type specifically 
And like I say, this is this is all different things that, once again, as a soccer analyst, you need to understand. I understand basically, I see if I was the lead, if I was the lead, there was an IP connection. So we're basically, here's the destination. So we have a, a outbound 443 communication using TCP protocol to this IP address. There's some file modifying, created some process. So this is basically stuff you're gonna be breaking down to fully understand this threat, okay? So once again, it's a lot, and this may be overwhelming, but I do want you to see this, and then let's see, go to the very top, and then you got the timeline view. This is where it tells you exactly what happened, threat status, and so let's see, does this go from, this goes from bottom up, so threat with confidence level, malicious detected, epic game install, installer, so confidence level, malicious, so basically, it was able to, based on what, the AI determined within Sentinel-1 that it believes that this is a malicious, not a suspicious threat. I'm gonna err on the side of trusting the tool. It successfully killed the threat. And then what else next here, it changed the status from not mitigated to mitigated. Gives the details there. And so I can zoom in a little bit for you, make it a little bit easier on your eyes. So the re reboot is required. And so there's your timeline. And so essentially these are kind of like, this is kind of like just a general view of what's gonna happen. So I'll tell you from my side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the machine. A lot of times I might, I don't know, I, I don't like when this happens and I get like a, a partial uninstall of software on my machine, you know? So the thing is you could go back in and unquarantine this threat, probably not advisable on the job. If it's not impacting something on production, you probably just wanna come ahead and leave it quarantine. They're on the side of caution because once again, you gotta think about risk. If you go ahead and unquarantine this, mark an exclusion to say this is okay, then if there is something wrong and something happens later, you're gonna be responsible for giving account of why you did so. So anyway, this is, this is once again, this is kind of the best representation I can give you of, of an actual threat, or that's not the best, but this is a good representation of actual threats. So I look forward to hearing your comments. If you made it to the end of the video, I always like to do it. And I do see when y'all are putting these in here. So I always choose very obscure stuff so that, you know, I know that who truly made it to the end of the video. And so if you made it to the end of the video, I would like for you to leave in chat right here. Process, where's the process ID? Process ID, just type 28780, okay? 28780 if you made it to the end of this video. And by the way, if you'd like to join my Discord server, let me know. There's an invite in the description of just about all videos. I got some people there. I got my buddy Archery, who's a network engineer. Like that's where I came from originally as a network engineer into cybersecurity. Archery's very talented. And then also we got some other people in there that are that are super, super talented when it comes to cybersecurity. So, you know, they're they're chomping at the bit to talk to somebody. So this is an opportunity for you to kind of like rub shoulders. I'm not trying to grow this artificially. Like I'm not trying to artificially grow like a following on YouTube. Like I've got, I was able to get to 30 something thousand. That's cool. And I'm like, okay, it's just kind of, then what? So really what I think for me is I want to be more personal. Okay, so I've actually rebooted the machine now. So this is my opportunity to let, like, let's see what actually happened after we completed the reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the presentation mode here. Here's a threat here that we're looking at. Um, actually, I wanna go back to this screen because in Sentinel-1, there's a few ways you can do it. You can actually click on the, the word, the actual threat details, or you can actually click on the shield here. And what this does is, okay, cool. This gives me a really good understanding of what happened. So remediated 41,059 threat creations. Didn't get them all. And then it says roll back 656 out of 658. So all the threat changes, 656 of the 658 threat changes were made at this point. So this is mitigated. So what you want to do at this point is, and I hope you can see this, I'll zoom in right quick. Okay. So now at this point, now that we've identified that, I think at this point, it's safe to say that this threat is resolved. So analysis verdict, we'll just continue to say, honestly, it's undefined at this point, and we'll leave it as that, but we'll go ahead and mark this as resolved. Okay, they say, and at the top you can see here it says resolved action. Ah, oh, dang, I missed that. Anyway, I hope you saw it. You can always go back and look in the video. Uh, but basically, when you see the orange banner, it just means basically it didn't completely get everything. And here's the interesting thing. Whoa, now that we got this, the classification was ransomware. Yeah, that's that's pretty deep. So literally something that I downloaded from Epic Game Staller gave the impression, not just malware, I would have expected to see malware, but it actually gave the impression of ransomware based on the verdict from Sentinel-1. It's pretty, pretty, pretty scary. 
So once again, I am not sure what the what the actual analysis is. I may never know, but I'm not willing to take the risk and actually do that. So I think this is this is every time that I've tried to install something for Epic Games, I've seen similar behavior really starting to make me question Epic Games because I think even when I was doing Fortnite, I had lots of trouble back in the day. I'm trying to to figure, like with detections and sense of one having to put exclusions in for the Epic Game installer. I just don't trust it at this point. So I'm not going to be doing any more games for Epic at this point because I just it just looks like they might be doing some kind of shady stuff that the AI endpoint detection doesn't like. So anyway, we should close the loop here. I'm going to uninstall if I can. Probably can't even uninstall it. But any residue from Epic Game Install, I'm going to try to get off my machine at this point. And I'll go back to playing Call of Duty Warzone just like it. most of the other people I know. So anyway, if this video was helpful, don't forget to drop a like in the video. Thanks for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this type of video because this is what I plan to continue doing. And I hope it really helps to show you exactly the real side of cybersecurity. Not just the certifications, nothing against that. But you need to actually know what people do on the job. And unfortunately, in cybersecurity, these tools are not accessible to everybody. And that's what I'm trying to break down that barrier for, for people who are trying to get into the field. Thanks for watching.